All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are back again for game two of the Group B stages. So here we have Tears for Ocelot, uh, the team you may have seen in the last game, versus Land Before Time. Uh, so first off, we have a Vein ban for uh, Tears for Ocelot, followed by an Echo ban and a Jinx ban. So it looks like they're really targeting that AD carry role, uh, vein, those Vein and Jinx bans. Yeah, they definitely looking, they do ban the Echo, maybe watching last game. Echo actually having a lot of clutch plays, really good ulties, a lot of great stuns. Might hurt Cake98 from those clutch plays he had. Karma ban, didn't see that last game. Maybe they uh, have that secret pocket pick Karma that no one knows about. This third ban, however, is being very drawn out. Not sure, they do ban the Olaf. Very strong this patch, not a bad ban at all. We'll have to see. Land Before Time going with the Victor ban, as Cozy actually had a really great game as Victor. No, yeah, I mean, uh, probably not one to risk any more Baron steals off of that, as well as, I mean, that late game was going pretty hard there. So the Evelyn, or, uh, sorry, Elise first pick for uh, Tears for Ocelot, very strong pick right now, even though she was nerfed a little bit, uh, but still, yeah, still very good on this patch. Uh, as they're hovering the junglers for that pick there, uh, probably not gonna be doing any swaps or anything. I, oh, Skarner open. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really hoping to see a Skarner come into this sometime today. It's a very exciting champion. Very, very broken though, thus far, as long as you can play around the objectives very nicely. Uh, so we'll have to see if those are actually locked in with the Lulu. Uh, still flex pick, could go top, could go mid, could go support. We're gonna have to see where they go with those ones. Lulu is 100% locked in. We're still waiting on that Skarner. But uh, I'm really hoping for that one. It's going to be fun to watch that. Uh, not something you typically see um, quite yet in any professional play just because those patches haven't hit quite yet. But um, two seconds draining out here, and it looks like that Skarner is going to be the pick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about that one. Yeah, definitely a strong pick. Very strong since they added in those shrines and they reworked his kit a little bit, adding, making it easier for the stuns, your alt procs, the stuns. I mean... He's a very strong jungler. We haven't seen him yet. He was banned last game. We're going to have to see if he has that big impact. We're going to have to wait and see. Not really. Tears for Ocelot was kind of the team to wait, pick the same time, and lock in. And they do again, bringing out the Leona Jarvan. Very strong combo. We'll have to see if that Jarvan is going top or mid lane, though. I mean, very, very strong pick. Good guy, especially with that new Titanic Hydra. No, yeah, I mean, we could definitely be seeing a, a Keen-esque mid laner here as he's going to be maybe pulling that out in the mid lane. But uh, I suspect that top, just because of the new uh, items that came into the game there, that Titanic Hydra, the Dead Man's Plate. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, very good items in the Jarvan, as well as they're also very strong on Skarner, too. Um, I mean, there's a few different ways you could build Skarner. You can go for the tanky build with the Cinder Hulk. You can go with just a high damage output with Warrior. You can even go Devour on him just in those shrines. It's going to make his attack speed go through the roof, just be absolutely absolutely absurd. We have a Tristana and a Janna locked in here, so they're definitely going with more of a protect the carry comp with the Lulu, with the Janna. So I mean, that's definitely going to be a solo lane Lulu now, it looks like. Um, gonna be uh, seeing the um, the Janna doing a lot of shield work there, going with the, also showing a barrier mid lane too, so probably going to be going with the Lulu in the mid lane, hoping to go with some kind of uh, AD or AP threat. Uh, oh wow, and then Nar and uh, Ari locked in for the Tears for Ocelot. That's going to be a very, very strong uh, engage comp. Hoping to really burst down some uh, players from Land Before Time. Very curious if we're going to see the Jarvan Leona bot lane as Tears for Ocelot opting to not have an AD carry. With the new Mordekaiser changes, Riot very much trying to push that non- Meta with just 80 carry support bot lane. Jarvan Leona is a very strong bot lane. That all in level 2 is very scary. We'll have to see if that is what comes through. But they do wait. They might pick up the Maokai top line. Maokai, Nar, pretty good matchup. It will be locked in. We'll have to see here if it's going to be Nar 80 carry. It wait, is the what? Jarvan going bot lane. Wait, what? We are going to see what? the Jarvan Leona. Very strong bot lane. I definitely like this. It's good to see a team go out there and have these unique picks maybe they've practiced this i don't know but i'm stoked great bot lane i've seen dyrus and afro used to run this back in like season two very strong man i'm excited 
No, yeah, I mean, this is uh, not something you see every day, so I'm very excited to see how this plays out, too, especially into a Tristana, into a, a Janna there. So they're going to be able to, you know, maybe hurt them out a little bit, but once that level 6 rolls around, they better watch their backs as they're going to be uh, jumped on with the Leona, with the Jarvan. Uh, so they lock in the Maokai as the final pick there, so... I mean, good front line. Depends with Skarner builds with his front line as well. I mean, he could go damage, could go tank. So we're really going to have to see how that one plays out. But uh, we'll be back right away here as we're going to be cutting to a break. Um, and, uh, yeah, hang around, guys. We'll be right back.
All right, guys, here we are back again with uh, game two of the Group B qualifiers. Uh, we got Land Before Time on the red side, and we got uh, Tears for Ocelot on the blue side. Um, yeah, so gonna have a good start here. Got Skarner in this game as well as uh, Jarvan Leona bot lane. So uh, everyone's in for a treat, I'd say, so far this game. Oh, and we're gonna meet up in the river here. Uh, yeah, so. So far, I mean, just uh, getting a little bit of cheeky invades here, getting some deep vision. Hoping to maybe get some of those shrines going for Skarner here. Is they're going to capture those right off the bat? Yes, they are. Uh, so that's going to give them some nice movement speed. Um, hoping to maybe just, you know, bait out the, the blue steel here by getting those shrines. You can do a lot of mind games with those shrines. I mean, you can really convince people where you are, where you're not. Just if you don't capture them on purpose with the Baron, with Dragon. So, I mean, a lot of things you can do with those shrines. They're looking for a bait here, actually, as they have the Lulu out in the open. But uh, no one from the uh, Tears for Ocelot is really going to, you know, go for it there. Not a lot of vision in there anyway, so not going to be seeing much. Just hoping to get a catch here at the blue buff. Yeah, those Skarner shrines do give vision, so it would be very scary for them to even try and go. They would spot them out before they got there. Um, moving into the bot lane here, I'm very excited to see how this matchup goes. I have a feeling that this Jarvan Leona, oh, they do lane swap them. That's actually pretty smart, I feel, from Land Before Time. The level 2 burst from Leona Jarvan is absolutely disgusting. Definitely not something you want to run against. But we will have to see how this goes. As we do see Skarner picking up that blue buff once again. We see the double jungle off the start. However, the Maokai not tanking the damage. They do know that it will be a lane swap. We're going to have to see how they go about this one. No, yeah, so uh, uh, the they're going to do a double jungle on the side of land before time here. So uh, just to really uh, stay out of that lane with the Jarvan and Leona because it's pretty strong. Oh, and they're going to go for a dive on the Gnar here. Right away is off the hop. Skarner doing some work, and they're going to get first blood onto the Gnar for Maokai. But, I, oh, he has to flash out of tower range there. Just barely getting out by the skin of his teeth. As they're looking to maybe fast push this tower down. Uh, pretty... Pretty quick action here so far for uh, for Lamb Before Time. Yeah, Lamb Before Time actually committing all five people up there. Lulu making her way up there, but very late. Very clean tower dive. I mean, two flashes were blown, but I mean, they do secure the first blood. Uh, Maokai has TP bottom, saving that bot turret, and they're not going to be able to pick up this top turret, but they will get a lot of damage down. But it is a great advantage that Maokai is the one who picks up the kill, and he's definitely going to need it in that two versus one lane. No, yeah, I mean, Nar might want to be careful here, not sticking out his long necks. Eh? <laughs> uh, as they're going to keep pushing the, the waves into tower here, uh, just getting a lot of damage, probably going to be fast pushing it with the Tristana. I mean, she's really good at taking towers, so, I mean, that's pretty much the obvious route there. As uh, Maokai is meeting up in the bottom lane, and they're hoping to maybe get a catch here. As they go in on the Maokai, doing a lot of damage, that level 2 burst... Oh, but he's not going to quite go down here. He's a little more tanky than an AD carry would be, so uh, going to get out here. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about, that the passive from Leona being procced by Zenith Blade and the stun, and as you do your flag and drag with the Jarvan, it's a lot of burst damage coming through. We're going to have to see if this Maokai can survive another burst of that, as Elise is making her way to the bot side, but they will, however, pick up the top turret. Tristana making sure to reset the wave before she hits the turret. Thought it would go down, doesn't take its a turret shot, but hey, she's okay. Nar making his way up there. But so far, solid start by Land Before Time, getting themselves already a thousand gold lead at the four minute mark. No, yeah, and I mean, so far the lane's going pretty well for Lulu. Oh, as Elise comes in, lands the cocoon, Charm coming out as well, chaining the CC very nicely, Ignite comes out as well, but level four not going to be able to cast as many spells as they'd like, not able to get the kill, but forcing the summoners in the mid lane. So I can definitely see uh, uh, Elise making her way back there sometime soon, once the Lulu does inevitably push out that lane again. So, uh, good, good gang from the Elise, though, so far. Um, yeah, definitely uh, making some good map movements uh, on the terms of uh, uh, blue side. Uh, so, yeah, so far, I mean, uh, just with the Relic Shield and the bot lane there as well, just going to be able to make some good sustain to match the, uh, the range of the opposing bot lane. Um, they're going to find Skarner there, actually, and they're going to go in on him. He's not near any of his shields, so they're going to do a lot of damage. Tristana hops in. Elise is there, too. Lands the cocoon. Gets the spiderlings out there. Going to get the repel onto the Skarner there. Going to do a lot of damage. Everyone's just kind of running away there. Oh, a kill onto Skarner from the Elise. 
Oh, and Leon is going in a little hard there, taking a couple tower shots as they're maybe the like looking to get out here. But oh, the bomb comes out onto Cocoon lands though, and they're going to go back in actually, do quite a bit of damage. But I'm thinking they're just going to leave it at that. A uh, lot of action in the bot lane. Wow. And that's the Jarvan Leona. A lot of CC bringing in the Elise, landing the Cocoon. But here we go, Maokai going in on the NAR, just trading. But the see, here we go. They're going to try and pop one of them. Seven Plate is used into the stun. They do, however, immediately blow up the Janna. But Tristana picks up the kill on Jarvan. Maybe a little aggressive there by Tears for Os Ocelot. But picking up the kill, showing that burst that I was talking about. They had to be very careful. But this Tristana did survive, did pick herself up a kill. And maybe not going the way Tears for Ocelot wanted this bot lane to go, but they're definitely showing up with that Jarvan AD carry. No, yeah, I mean, uh, they really gotta get the advantage when they can, when those early levels before Tristan is evil, gonna be able to, you know, push him away before Janna's gonna be able to reset the fight there. So, I mean, they really gotta, you know, get the advantage when they can in that early game. So, uh... Yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting, uh, interesting to see. But yeah, Leona went in. She didn't even a wasn't able to get to the end of the Zenith Blade before that tornado was able to get her there. And uh, Janna picks up a kill. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think we're just gonna see some farming here in the top lane. Just a battle of tanks thus far. Even though Nar did go for the longsword in the three pots, so he's probably gonna be going towards uh, you know a brutalizer or before uh, black cleaver, anything like that. Probably gonna be going for the damage item first off there. But I mean. Quite a bit of AP as well coming in for um, coming in for the uh, land before time. So I mean, they might even opt towards the hex drinkers there too. But uh, at least going for the you know the standard uh, rune glaive build there. Yeah, well, I'm curious. We do see a lot of the Skarners these days going into that Cinder Hulk and then going something like uh, the Titanic Hydra. Oh, we do see Malkai going in. Does have the ulti Narbar nowhere near. Flag and drag does go up from the Jarvan, denied by the tornado. We'll have to see Janna, or sorry, Leona coming in. A lot of damage coming up from that Tristana with only just a pickaxe built so far. This burst lane not exactly going the way they want it. Might start being outscaled if this Jarvan and Leona don't start uh, completing these kills, guaranteeing themselves that extra gold. But like I was saying, it, so that Skarner is definitely going to be doing a lot of AD damage on top of that. Tristana with the AP split pretty much between the Maokai and the Lulu. They have a pretty balance in their damage with their team and a lot of disengage with the Tristana and Janna. We do see Skarner, however, coming with the gank. The flag and drag is used. He does land the slow. Leona Zenith Blade trying to get herself the extra distance. Tornado does knock her up. Tristana putting down some damage. The exhaust does come out. They're going to try and finalize the kill. However, a TP is coming in. Janna secures it with the Zephyr. Tristana jumping out, trying to get away from Nar. The Nar does have the Nar bar. Another TP coming in from the red team. Oh! Great flash ulti by the Nar. Putting down a lot of damage. He does land the stun and the rock. A double kill for the Nar. Maokai trying to put down a lot of damage. The Jarvan and the Nar are very healthy. The Lulu ulti does come down, though. They're going to take down the Nar here. Jarvan just trying to get away and Ari late to the fight. And that is a two for two, I believe, in that fight overall. But very great fight. Unreal ulti there by Nar picking up two kills for his team no yeah i mean great response to the teleport there he came in at exact the right time had his nar bar warmed up he was ready to go there so he flashed in got the alt off got a double stun there was able to pick up the double kill just great play from the nar going two and two um i mean he really couldn't ask for more as he's going for the phage and the ruby or um not the ruby crystal but he's going towards that black cleaver so he's looking to do some damage as well so once he finishes that up i mean those nar alts and the the cues are going to hurt a lot more uh once we get going there but it looks like they're actually going to be going for drag as uh the tears for ocelot with a nice uh vision advantage uh, on that side actually, but it looks like they will get spotted out pink ward in the bottom river brush as red side is making their way down there too Yeah, they didn't however capture that shrine before they went for it We'll have to see if land before time is gonna start capturing it They do secure it for tears for ocelot a lot of damage under that leona We'll have to see if the lulu is able to pick it up tristana jumping in uh, ignite goes down onto the janna They're putting down a lot of damage on her flag and drag comes down does knock up the lulu She does not have ulti available. They do take her down as well in the on the other side Ari does take down the Tristana uh, Jarvan just barely getting out of the fight there. The sapling is chasing him down. Ari flashes to take the hit for her teammate. And they do sacrifice the Elise, but they do pick up Dragon for a 3-for-1 exchange. Or sorry, 2-for-1. Not 3-for-1. No, yeah, I mean, Skarner just was able to come into the tail of that fight. He picks up the kill using his ult just to secure it there, not wanting to the Elise to be able to get out, repel to anything in the jungle there. Uh, so, I mean... 
kill secured from the Skarner. Uh, one, one, and two. And he's got a decent uh, advantage there. And he does go for the Cinder Hulk versus any of the damage items. So uh, he's definitely looking to become a frontline threat. As well as Maokai is going for the Catalyst. And he's going to go in on this Gnar and just do a little bit of damage. Nice trade coming in. As those uh, passive procs from the Gnar are going to do quite a bit of percent health damage onto the Maokai. So, I mean... All in all, good trade towards Gnar, um, but I mean, Ping's coming out in the bot lane. They definitely spot out the Leona, making those map movements. Uh, so, good uh, vision coverage for Land Before Time uh, in that river brush. I can't believe that Ward hasn't been spotted out yet in that brush, but uh, looking to maybe go on and engage here, but Zenithly does miss, and uh, Bomb's going to be put onto Jarvan, so it's going to dissuade any... Oh, but uh, Gnar going in for a big kill there. Uh, Gnar, alt coming out. He's caught under turret, though, taking a lot of damage from that... Wow, too many turret shots as the sapling is going to run after him, slow him down. Maokai is hoping to pick this up on the tail end, though. Uh, Mininar coming back on again, so he's going to be able to hop, but he's throwing out the boomerang, hanging around still. Uh, pretty dangerous decision as both junglers are making their way up there, actually, so we're going to have to see how this turns out. Oh, junglers fighting it out here. The cocoon does land onto the Skarner here. He is going to chase her down, almost has that slow with the red buff, going for the stun proc. Isn't able to get it on bot lane here. We have the Tristana maybe oh, stepping up a little oh, much. Oh. Great tornado denying the Zenith played there. The exhaust does go down on the Jarvan. Ulti used by Tristana. The heal comes out from the Jarvan. It doesn't look like his combo is going to be up in time. He just about uses it, but they take him down before the flag and drag works. The flash comes out from the owner. They will get away. And somehow Tristana survives in that fight by some great peeling by his support there to keep him alive. No, yeah, I mean, Scumbag Sharptooth, he's stealing all those kills in the bot lane. 3-3-4 three, three, and four on the support. Uh, so, I mean, kills not necessarily going on all the right people, whereas opposed to uh, Tears for Ocelot. Uh, I mean, they got the kills on the Ari, so she's going to be able to do a lot more damage there. Uh, kills on the Jarvan as well as onto the Gnar. Uh, getting some good item spikes here as Jarvan does finish up his Titanic Hydra. Uh, Gnar's going to finish up his Cleaver. And Ari's working towards that Luton's Echo first item. Oh, and Zenith Blade is knocked up from the Tornado. Great Tornado from Sharptooth so far to really dissuade any engages here. Yeah, I must say, as bursty as that lane is, that Jenna is really saving Tristana's tail. However, though, Tristana actually is down in gold to this Jarvan. They're doing very well at keeping up in the gold, but the Jenna, however, very much gold discrepancy. A thousand gold for that Jenna, which she is picking up those kills. Maybe could be giving it to her AD carry. But across the map, really only a thousand gold difference still for Land Before Time. As Tears for Ocelot still fighting in this game, keeping themselves alive. I'll have to see here... If they're going to be able to take this bottom turret between the Jarvan and Leona, they do have a lot of squishy targets on the team. And I feel like the Jarvan, if he does get, he can use his wall and they can use the Narvan combo to really take them down. No, yeah, I mean, uh, Maokai's still going for that hard engage, but oh, Skarner is coming down to the bot lane too, and he's going to land the ult on Leona, and they're going to pick this up pretty easy. Not a lot of hope for Leona to get out of here, actually, I think, just because uh, that's a very strong ult. And the Lulu ult pops up in the mid lane here. Uh, nothing to follow up, though. Not enough spells off cooldown for the blue scene team here uh but all in all i mean good trade uh getting the summer dispels out of the lulu getting the ult uh really making her back they're gonna push hard onto that tower probably take it here unless the skarner has something more to say uh as he's helping to come in just to defend the tower but cocoon lands and they're gonna be able to just get enough damage to chunk him out here but uh looks like they might get this bot tower as well just because tristana can push it hard enough but uh Jarvan's able to clear that way pretty well, but still going to be able to get it. Uh, looking for the insect here, but uh, I don't think Tristana's quite going to find it. She jumps in, but the, oh, the ult comes out, as well as the Gnar TP comes in. Janna resets the fight. What a beautiful ult, getting the Gnar right out of his hop. But he's charging up that Gnar bar. He's going to, oh, the Tristana ult pushes Gnar back. Doesn't get the stun off, but the Gnar ult still comes through. Black Cleaver damage doing tons. Flash over the wall to get out of there. Maokai just a little bit late on that TP. Yeah, that Tristana maybe getting a little hyphy there. Jump again, trying to finish the kill onto that Jarvan. The rest of the team coming in. Great monsoon to disengage that Nar jump before he could jump in and ulti. But just wasn't enough to keep his AD carry up. Yeah, I mean, the, the bot lane working out four tiers for Ocelot, but definitely going to get outscaled by that Tristana. We'll have to see if he can get enough items to burst her before... The Tristana is able to finish the IE static ship where she hits that very strong power spike. But we're going to have to see Lulu is whimsy enough. It does get her out of there. They've been rather unsuccessful trying to gank this Lulu. Curious to see what she builds. I think she's going to go for that Zeke's Harbringer in the mid lane. As she does build that Glacial Shroud using it on the Tristana. Should put the Tristana at about 90% crit when it is activated. 
No, yeah, especially once we get to that late game scaling, that crit's gonna be really, really nice on Tristana. She's, uh, as everyone knows, one of the better scalers in the game as far as, and she's gonna push those towers extremely fast, especially with the help of the Lulu. Um, I mean, and that nice front line, as well as the shield coming in for the Janna, giving it that bonus AD. As they're setting up for drag here and putting down a pink ward, clearing out the vision. But it looks like we might have a, a nice fight coming up here as both teams are making their way towards that dragon. Yeah, the Narbar not quite filled up as Land Before Time does start. The Charm, however, does go down onto the Maokai, bringing him pretty low. Dragon just under half health here. We're going to have to see. Elise does repel up. Doesn't go in Jarvan. Flag and drags over. Goes in by himself. Caught in the back. Zenith Blade doesn't hit anyone. Maokai engages onto the Ari, but she does use her ulti to get out of there. Skarner secures the Dragon, uses his ultimate, pulls back the Jarvan, and they just pick him up as he flag and drags over the wall. Wasn't enough to get himself out of there. The Leona in there pretty deep, trying to go for the Maokai by herself. She's pretty tanky, taking a lot of hits. We'll have to see if she's able to secure the kills. The rest of her team's trying to come around for the flank. Nar is mega form, but not near anyone to do anything. The so Ari goes over the wall. The stun doesn't land. Lulu ulti, wild growth used onto the Janna as well as Monsoon to disengage the rest of the team. Oh. Nice Nar ulti. He, uh, however, the Maokai comes in blocking the rock. He drops into the small mode. Skarner going beast mode by himself. Tristana, though, picking up the kills, getting the resets, jumping through, and that should be a clean, a triple kill for the Tristana and just missing the ace, but getting the five kills and dragons without losing a single member. Land before time, making a statement there. No, yeah, I mean, uh, that was definitely probably the best way that fight could have gone for Land Before Time. Tristana picking up all those kills there. So, 6-3-6. Six, and six. Uh, She's going to finish off that Infinity, Infinity Edge. She was also sitting on the Avarice Blade, so she's going to be going for the Shiv. Um, she's going to be scaling up pretty nicely with that large gold advantage that she's going to be getting from those kills. So, uh, good fight from Land Before Time. Uh, really well played. Very extended, though, so... Um, Skarner also doing a lot of work keeping those backline carries out of the fight. Uh, so, I mean, this Skarner pick really working out for him, actually. Yeah, just showing why he's so strong and why that uh, win rate has shot up since that Skarner rework. Very strong, though. Shrine's doing a lot as well as that rework to his passive. On top of being able to have that Lulu all they have a nice front line, but that Nar doing a lot of work for Tears for Ocelot, really keeping his team in the game with those ultis, just wasn't able to find the right ulti last time. We'll have to see the Glitterlands just come through, but the Ari and the Nar putting down a lot of damage here. Cozy and Cake gonna maybe just try and walk out of this before they get picked up, and she will have to use the Spirit Rush to get herself to safety away. As we do see, Tristana does have the ship, and I.E., the big crit comes through. Maybe with a little hand, does get the kill, but taken down by Meganar, does throw in the Jenna into the wall. They do CC here, they pick up the kills. Skarner and Lulu very low, they're going to see. Cake and Kill the King, DL, going to chase it down. Not able to get fully towards them, but a nice couple pickups there as Tristana, maybe getting a little aggressive there. Jumping in 3v1, but somehow still picking up a kill. No, yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, Tristana might have uh, thought she did a little more damage than she actually did, hoping to get the reset and hop back out, but it came a little bit too late as the Gnar was able to alter into the wall, lock her up, get the stuns off. Uh, but all the while, I mean, Jarvan was picking up the bot lane turret, so he was uh, pushing the advantages, and now they're pushing the mid lane. So, I mean, good uh, good rotations here and pickups from the blue side as, uh, oh, they're not quite going to pick up that mid tower, actually, as the Maokai's going to meet them there, going to flank. Oh, Skarner all coming in. They're going to pick up kill. Uh, kill a king there, and the uh, Leona all comes out to stun up, but uh, not quite gonna get anyone. Uh, oh, as Leona's gonna go down, and they're just gonna push up the mid lane here. Uh, Tristana's gonna just be able to rip through those turrets, so we're just gonna have to wait and see if Jarvan is gonna back or if he's just gonna keep going towards that top tower and hope to, you know, split push his way to victory here. Yeah, tears for Ocelot actually having a lot of good picks. We'll have to see the charm does land onto the Maokai, getting negating that engage there as Righteous Glory was popped. They do, however, lose their tier 2 mid turret, but here's for Ocelot, actually, for being from behind. Really great picks there after that Tristana went full ham. Tried to go in. Ari trying to land the combo. They turned it very well. Got a couple kills. Trying to get turrets. Just bring themselves back into that game. Maybe overstayed a little long, but that's that's how it rolls. They just get punished for staying too long. The Jarvan not with his team. They do get caught out. They've just missed the Lulu. Just goes B in time. At least not able to put down some damage. But Tears for Ocelot showing that they can get those picks and maybe keep themselves in this game. 
No, yeah, like you said, the Zeke's Harbringer finished up for the Lulu in the mid lane. Definitely going for a supportive style rather than the hard AP scaling with the shields, with the whimsy. Uh, actually just looking to boost that Tristana as it is a, you know, protect the Trist comp. Uh, going with the Janna shields with the Lulu as well as just that nice front line to peel people off. Uh, with some good lockup. I mean, that Skarner ult is pretty much a game changer. Uh, really just dragging people way into the back line where Tristana is just going to crit them right out of town. Uh, so, Ari just going to be clearing up some vision here as Red Side does have some deep wards into uh, Tears for Ocelot's jungle. Uh, but uh, Tears for Ocelot going to be picking up the uh, Scuttle Crab, looking to get that dragon control as it is up in a minute. So, just getting some good prep coming in here. Uh, Aegis of the Legion coming out for the Skarner, so he's really just going for uh, a team uh, fighting esque build, going for the uh, the aura to help uh, help out his team keep that Tristan alive a little bit longer. Um, looking for more armor coming in for the Maokai. Oh, but uh, Ari's gonna get caught there. Those crits, unreal. First out. Uh, that Zeke's Harbinger doing a lot of work as uh, Skarner's going to drag that Leona right back into the fight. Oh, but Leona ult come back out, but not going to do a lot as the Jarvan hops in, ults onto the Tristana, but not going to be able to do enough damage. Tristana is just wrecking these fights, just doing way too much damage. Red buff ticking away as uh, Repel is actually going to save her in the meantime, but going to come right back down onto the Glitterlands as they're just going to clean that one up. Four for none as they're lo looking for Baron here. Yeah, and... I mean, Tears for Ocelot going for this off meta Jarvan pick, and I mean, early game they didn't get to do as much with it, they did pick up a couple of kills, but that outscaling from the Tristana, there's not much you can do besides that, and now they just turn towards Baron and they're going to shred it. You put the Lulu picks onto the Tristana, she has a BF sword on top of her IE static ship, she is going to destroy that thing, and in team fights, once this Zeke Harbringer is proc, she's got pretty close to a 90%. Crit chance. She is just gonna hit, hit, hit. And as you saw with that kill with Ari, she can pretty much take down the assassins before they're able to react. No, yeah, not giving uh, Ari a lot of time to think here. But uh, Leona just looking to scare off the Maokai from that bot lane as Jarvan's gonna push the wave back out. Lots of members in the bot side. They're looking to rotate onto this dragon. Uh, as Red Side is also making their way down there. But uh, Nar is on the other side of the map, but he does have his TP up, and there is a ward for him to come in onto. But uh, just whether or not they can uh, communicate that towards. Uh, the team, uh, we'll have to wait and see, but TP is coming in, team fight is starting up here, uh, Tristana getting the crits off, uh, Nar in the middle of the pit, he's gonna be able to get his Nar ult off, hopefully, but no, he's just not able to get close to the carries, and Tristana's just gonna blow him up the backline, she's diving in, she's going way too hard, Spirit Rush comes out from Ari, as, uh, getting a little scared, a little hyphy, uh, tension is pretty high here. Yeah, it does pop the heal to try and chase down the Ari, but isn't enough speed to catch him up. And this Tristana, just not scared at all to just dive into that line. She has the Lulu shield, that Heartbringer, once it's procced, it does a ton of damage. Throwing out those crits, and what do we see again? Going straight onto the Jarvan. She has no fear with that Janna Lulu to back her up. Skarner to pull any targets off of her that they need. The Mist Charm. And just tank and turret. Jarvan tries to do something about it. However, Skarner will ult him out, and he's completely annihilated. Skarner going to keep chasing the Leona. She does miss the Solar Flare, and they will slowly back off and just keep downing this turret, hopefully turning it into inhibitor. We're going to have to see if Nar can get Mega Form before the rest of his team gets taken down. But Tristana drops in. She flash cleanses, and the Lulu, Lulu ulti does come out. Another kill for Tristana. She does have the double. She's just autoing away. The Nar ulti doesn't go down. A triple kill. Putting down a lot more damage onto the Leona, the Quadra kill down, and this is one big Tristana with Baron buff and this creep wave. This very well could be game. We're gonna have to see if the Jarvan's gonna try and stop them or if he's just gonna be a nice guy and sit there. He's looking for the opportunity. He's gonna sit on the back end of the Nexus here, and that will be a 23-minute game. Unfortunately, oh, we'll have to see. Oh, they got yeah, some yeah. a kill. Very delayed. Does pick it up, however. Very quick game, 24 minutes. Land before time, just very dominant performance. Taking advantage of that early tower dive, putting everyone ahead, and just snowballing that lead out of control. No, yeah, and I mean, great itemization from Land Before Time. Also, just support this Tristana pick. She ends the game 19 4 and 9 with a very late extended pentakill. They really just put all the eggs into that basket, and I mean, uh, 
uh, all the dinosaur eggs into that basket. <laughs> um, as I mean, great peel from Sharptooth. That was some amazing tornadoes, some great Janna alts. Uh, they really played to their strengths there. So uh, great, great team play from Lamb Before Time. So uh, we got one more game coming up for you guys yet tonight. Uh, so we'll be right back with that one uh, after a short break.